Okay, g'day. Here we are in My Source Matrix, the Hell's Gift to Content Management Systems. And you're probably watching this screen recording because you can't figure it out like I couldn't figure it out. What I'm about to show you is uh, adding, uh, what am I doing? I'm, I'm creating staff pages, uh, and from the staff pages, I'm taking contact details and having them automatically list on a collective staff page. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So over the left here we've got the navigation for the site, over the right here we've got the edit windows and stuff like that. So in this particular instance we've got to find the faculty sites, that's here. And we scroll, I'm scrolling and doing the faculty of health. And then within the faculty of health I'm editing staff uh, in sports studies. Okay, editing sports studies, and there we are in staff. Let's close that one. Okay, so there's all the staff in sports studies, uh, missing one or two. And what I'm doing is uh, I'm putting information on each one of these staff pages. So if we have a look at Keith Lyons, here it is over here. So we've got a photo of Keith and contact details below. Now those contact details are in a separate little box that I can pick up and add in the staff page generally. And you see that nested content? That's nested content for Keith's contact details. So for Sandy, so for John. So that means that all I need to do is update each of the pages, each of the staff pages, and that will automatically update this collective staff page contact details and the like. So let's go through that process. You see down here it used to be manually put in, that meant I would have to update it in two places. So if, say, say for example, Ben was to change rooms, I'd have to update it here, but then I'd also have to go into his staff page and update it. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to grab, I'm going to copy this content off, paste it into his staff page in a new little box, and then come back to here and make it so that it automatically comes here. Okay, let's go. So with all pages, you get with my source matrix, you get used to the uh, amazingly huge number of clicks just to get something going. First click is to acquire the locks on this page, and it puts you into uh, slowly does it puts you into editing mode. Still coming, okay, still coming. Here we go. Okay, I've acquired the locks. That box there is Keith's nested contact details, doesn't show the nested content, it just shows you the status of the page. And then the next one and the next one. So we've got to slow scroll right down to that box where all that contact detail is manually in there. That's the one there. I click this button to edit it. Select that. Cut it out. Down the bottom I'll just commit that. So on the live website Ben's contact details won't be visible. Probably not the best of practice, but it's only for a few minutes. Okay, that's saved. Now down here I find Ben's page. Right click the, you can't click the icon because that will turn it into move page mode. You've got to click the name of the page. Right clicking, edit context, contents. Right, now once again I acquire the locks. And what I'm going to do is create a new, see this box here with the dotted lines? I'm going to create another one of those. Pops up with this, I want it to be a WYSIWYG box, and we'll call it Ben Ratray. Just call it Ben Ratray. And OK on that. Now, for some reason, uh, it's still processing, for some reason it's not visible, and that reason is because I need to go over to Ben, I need to expand the page contents, and if I turn on this tick button here, it shows the status of all the pages, and blue means it's under construction. So I change the details, and change it to approve, and commit that, and that's approved to go live, and make it live. Incredible, isn't it? Okay. 
So that particular little box now with no content in it is now live. So I go back to Ben's page and edit contents. Acquire the locks again. Now the box is visible. I click this icon to edit it and paste. So the WYSIWYG editor on um, my source matrix is not the greatest. The HTML is pretty old and messy. Um, oh, but that was right. I should leave that there like that. Uh, but I needed to delete those spaces there. And I'm not, not even going to dare look at the uh, HTML. Okay, so now Ben's page has two instances of contact details. One in its own little box that I can pull across to automatically update the other one. So I'm going to edit this one and delete that. Now this isn't my source matrix fault, this is my fault for not thinking ahead on the uh, page. Something going wrong there. Okay, committing that. We're almost there. Okay, that's done. See, now I've got two boxes, Ben's bio and Ben's contact details. Now I want to go back to the staff page, edit contents. don't have to acquire the locks because I think it's set to 12 minutes. Once you've clicked it, you've got it for 12 minutes. So I scroll down past all of these asset boxes, they're called, and I've got to create a new one between the last asset box and the one with the manual contact details. So, new one there. Now this one's not going to be a WYSIWYG, this one's going to be a nest content I'm called Ben Ray. Okay. and waiting it says it's done but we're still waiting and here it comes takes you back to the top so you've got to scroll down the page again and there it is there no page has been selected change and, what I'm going to, and this goes pink so I scroll down to Ben's pages and open up his page contents and there's that little box with his details I created, use me and that's put it in there and we commit that Whew, that's it I have just created a box in Ben Ratray's um, staff page for his contact details and that box called an asset has been nested into the staff page generally pretty wild, isn't it? I mainly did this recording to show you how complicated, needlessly complicated my source matrix is. Hope you enjoyed this screencast.